Welcome gamers to this week's episode of Last Call Gaming. We're at episode number 64. My name is Craig Prowse and the man that always shows up and delivers, Manger Montemay. It's spooky season. It is spooky season. Do you want to tell the kids what you think is a spooky game? Which one? Oh, I, I would say Donkey Kong Country 2 is a spooky game. Because I was reading someone's debate on it the other day on an online forum and I wholeheartedly agree. There's ghosts, there's themes... Their crocodiles are clearly soldiers in the first one, and now they're pirates. So they're just dressing up as whatever the fuck they want to be. And then King K. Rule's like... You're pulling strings here, pal. Baron K. Rule in the fucking third... I, he's all over the place with his costumes. I wholeheartedly disagree. But if you guys want to play a good game during Halloween, regardless if it's spooky, check out DKC2. So guys, as always, we like to drink some beers around here. And this recommendation was done by... Billy B, and he said he wanted us to check out uh, Melon Cart by Golden Road. Now, Andrew went to go pick him up at, I believe, Jeff's River Mart, and they didn't have the melon, but in the comment on YouTube, he also said if you want to check out the pineapple, uh, you can. So we grabbed, or he grabbed, the Palisades Pineapple, made in LA. It's an American wheat L with pineapple and apricot flavor. I love the way this can looks. It looks like to me, and I was telling Andrew, like when two Starbursts mix over it looks i don't know i love the color i love the design and i really like the flavor i can definitely taste the pineapple but not in like an overpowering way that that turns me off by any means i feel like this reminds me of like like vice city like miami is what this yeah. can kind of screams at me. I, this is at a 4.8 so you know right around that meaty part of the curve with these uh these beers we've been getting you like that it says like a short fatter can yeah Get a good grip on there. I think it's solid kind of, grip. Solid I think grip. it's kind of okay, but I'm already done. <laughs> I just ate beef jerky, so that might be why I feel like mine's a little bland. Yeah, I keep a nice bag of beef jerky around for Andrew when he comes over for snacking, and he ate Bug it, snacks. <laughs> and then he drank this. He's like, I don't taste it. I was like, well, I think you still got a Caribbean jerk in your mouth. Yeah, we gotta wait for that to kick in. <laughs> so, guys, checking out the thumbnail. Um, we were kind of seeing what was going on with the news. There's a lot of stories kicking around, but this one dropped actually today as of uh, October 8th that GameStop had a big surge in its stock. And I saw two different reports. One was saying 21%, but I believe it's closer to a 44% increase. That's what I saw, yeah. yeah, stock was going for around six bucks X amount of time ago. It now shot up to $13.49. Now, this is pretty big because just recently, Andrew and I have been talking about in other episodes, you know, is GameStop going to rise or fall? Our money was hoping that it was going to stay up and active because they were just saying that they were going to close about 450 stores two months ago. So it looks like that might change. Currently, they're sitting at around 5,000 stores. So what just happened is GameStop announced a multi-year strategic partnership with Microsoft. Now you see that, you're kind of curious of what that entails, and I'm sure there's going to be more details to come of what that actually uh, undertakes, but what they've given us so far is that this now officially makes uh, GameStop an authorized dealer for the Xbox All Access program, which essentially is you come in, you can get an Xbox plus a 24-month Game Pass Ultimate um, Pass for no cost up front. This is kind of the financing that we were talking about when they wanted Xboxes to come out. But it's not just going to be limited to the Xbox One X or the Series X. It's going to be basically consoles in general. The other thing that they're showing is that now they're going to have access to Microsoft's Dynamics 365 portfolio of cloud applications to help run its back-end and in-store operations. So this is going to lean itself to getting... The customer history it's going to do real-time info on product availability look at subscriptions pricing and promos to provide an in-store customer experience as well as equipping its employees and stores with the microsoft service tablet so when you walk into like maybe a phone store and AT&T rep is sitting there with a tablet ready to take all your info it's kind of going to be like that where now gamestop is going to be sitting there ready to handle all your business log into your account and pretty much collect data and it's a lot to take in so andrew uh you brought the story to me actually today and it, it's a lot of big stuff because microsoft is is just you know hitting things you know is this a home run or not we'll see but what's your initial takeaway from this or is there anything you want to add before we dive into it i think i mean personally microsoft has nothing to really lose by it because it's not <laughs> like they're losing anything it doesn't really say the like whether they had to pay for this sort of deal or buy in or anything or 
if they were just like, hey, we'll offer you these sort of things, and you kind of just let us collect some data and see, you know, what's out there, what's the consumer want, whatever, because GameStop would obviously be desperate for something like that just to kind of crawl back. And again, you know, to see that jump up in their stock prices, not to mention, I think if anything, too, it's good marketing for Xbox, not just because... <clears throat> I doubt they're going to, like, flood the store with, like, oh, Xbox marketing everywhere. It's got to be Xbox first when you see blah, blah, blah. That could be something down the road. But more importantly, if someone's going into a store, they could be like, oh, hey, uh, should I get an Xbox? How does that work? Whatever. Tell me about the Game Pass. Tell, tell me about the streaming. Now that they have those tablets, someone could easily just be like, oh, here, yeah, I can show you how gaming streaming works right now. Boom, set it up. Or instead of even ha how you have those kiosks with the demos or something like that, have a kiosk with a tablet in it with the Xbox controller so you can test the streaming yourself with all the games that are on the Game Pass or something like that versus just the here's a 10 minute demo on a piece of cheese for dinner. <laughs> yeah, because recently um, Microsoft just kind of shut down all of their, um, what was it? Like, kind of like, like the, a majority of their stores, I think. I, I, what were the stores called? Weren't they like the... Uh, it was like a Microsoft Center. The Microsoft something. Centers and stuff like that. Yeah, they, so. they only kept like four of them up in their major ones. I think there's like one in LA and New York and stuff like that. Yeah, so now they're kind of still hanging on to this brick and mortar thing because, like Andrew was saying, it's not necessarily saying that they bought them out. It's a it's a partnership. So a lot of people were kind of eyeballing this. Kind of, it almost looks like they're sponsoring it and they're kind of making it like a new home to get. Not only are they still the number one selling places for for uh, games and stuff, but now it kind of has this Xbox you know, brand of approval or seal of approval on it. And I'm curious if now when you can go in there and get, you know, zero down, get an Xbox console, get the financing, it's almost something to drive people in. Cause I'm wondering if they're gonna take that off of online and make it a physical location only just to keep people in. Cause that's the number one, you know, thing they're trying to go for. They want people coming in and right. if this is an experience that you can only get going to a local GameStop or at least maybe being that zero down. Maybe when you do it online, it's, you know, cause it's all still gonna be based on your credit, maybe there's a bonus or some sort of benefit going in versus doing it online. They've got a lot to kind of figure out. And again, we'll see a lot more over, I'm sure by the end of this year of where this goes, but I'm still kind of curious of where, if the financing is really even gonna be worth it. Cause the main goals they wanna put, I mean, this is another way to put Xboxes in as many hands as possible. Hey, come in, zero down for X amount of time. Here's an Xbox. Here's Game Pass. That's one more person they get in their subscription and one more person they get in the ecosystem. Right. Not to mention, I mean, who knows what kind of maybe marketing deals they'll have like later on down the road. Like, hey, we're having, we're launching whatever X game. If you get it from GameStop, it comes with this skin, this bonus. You can play it 24 hours early, a week early, something like that. Or even like, I know like there's some games when you get them from Walmart for whatever reason when they launch are like $10 less than what it is at GameStop, even like uh, that Super Mario 3D All-Stars was like $10 less for some reason. So maybe they could kind of help close that sort of a gap too. I think that's looking a little bit too much into it. But again, it's just, there's a lot of possibilities for what they could do for something like this. Yeah, because I'm really curious. Is GameStop, I mean, we again, when you look a couple episodes back, we were talking about, they were trying to figure out what their new identity was going to be dipping this far low. You know, people would think when they were going to close, you know, were they going to focus more on apparel? Were they going to focus more on toys? Were they going to become lounges? It seems like Microsoft is is kind of giving that push forward of let's rebrand it as kind of almost um, not still buy buy your games here, buy your toys here, buy your apparel here, but now there's a there's a place you can walk in and it's a person to person tech center for anything you have on Microsoft because it's not just going to be Xboxes, it's going to be all the cloud services, it's going to be everything they have moving forward. So I can see what they're trying to do because it doesn't seem like they dip that much money into it. They're just kind of re setting them up i'm just curious of how long or how much longer it will keep them afloat because gamestop's main thing is based on buying you know buying your used games and reselling it and the closer we move into an all digital market with both next gen having two you know SKUs that are all digital i'm curious what buying or what what do they see buying a brick and mortar store is going to help benefit without outside of giving someone an xbox zero down I think they'll just be able to see the curve of the market, what games are selling, what games are not selling, just extra analytical yeah, data. Hey, they, hey, like, they're getting all that data, and data's money, baby. Yeah, for something like that down the road. And I wonder if, too, like now kind of thinking, since they are going to be like a superficial, like a Microsoft center, essentially in a way, not that they would fix anything there, 
But realistically, if you had some sort of warranty with Microsoft, maybe that's a thing now too. Take is it straight there. You could physically take it there versus because you're. I'd be more likely to buy a warranty if I had physically somewhere to take it. So like the Xbox One or something like that. If it breaks, whatever, I'd pay the extra money. Take it back to GameStop, and they can mail it out for me, replace it on the spot. But even if they're going to mail it out, mm-hmm. that still takes the responsibility off of me to get a box, send it to Microsoft, and now I pay the forty dollar, whatever the hell it is, for it to go out or something like that. Either way, you know, I think that's something that's a little bit more enticing. Okay, if anything goes wrong, I can take it to there and they'll ship it out. They'll handle everything for me. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to bring up because I was uh, speaking on to where, you know, buying a brick and mortar when everything's moving digital is in 2009, um, they were reporting that physical media, you know, in the game industry was sitting at 80% of the market. And as of 2018, it's at less than 17. So, you, I mean, you can't look at this deal and go, oh, Microsoft brought it to like bring that back. It's got to be something more. Not that we're so much missing. We're just not seeing it. You know, it just happened today. We're gonna see more of it. As of right now, we know that they're gonna rebrand them and re- or not rebrand them, retech them up. Right, get everything up to skew. Start uh, mining that in- that data information that where it knows exactly what you know customers would like, and as well as um, gearing up their staff. You know, make everyone more knowledgeable. So we always like our GameStop. I'm curious how it's going to happen because ours is down the street. You know, there's some game stops that are still X far away from people. So I should have asked about it today. Is, when yeah, I was is it going to be worth that drive for some people when their local one closed to go an hour to do that? I mean, it is better than nothing, but, I mean, we have a good one right next to us. I'm curious what's going to happen to the rest of, you know, the U.S. per se if, you know, oh, I got to drive an hour 45 now just to go to a store to get my warranty or get more information. So I'm still kind of on the fence of, who this is actually benefiting, but I am super happy that GameStop for the foreseeable future, I would say at least has nine to 12 months of life if this doesn't go well. If it does go well, then sure, we have a new we have a new boost of life in it. Again, we'd have to do the deal. Who knows what this is even costing them? Yeah, and them. I'm sure that's going to pop up over yeah, the next Yeah, and, and it might not even cost them that much to where it's like, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's re- I'm sure that is the case. Like, if this doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. It's not really a big deal to us. But if it does pan out, this is going to be a huge benefit. Yeah, I just you got to keep in mind, we, we're coming off the back of them buying Bethesda. I mean, Microsoft is kind of swinging in all these directions. They're picking up first-party um, studios. And now they're doing a physical place to where you can go in and get some sort of Xbox, you know, benefit. And will that be help for them? I can't see how it would hurt them. I just don't see the initial benefit right away. And uh, I got to say, it's it's a bold, bold move. Because if anyone's keeping GameStop out of the toilet, it's going to be the trillion dollar company that just bought Bethesda for, what, seven billion? Yeah, whose consoles are currently sold out right now. Yeah, so um, anything else on that, Andrew? Are we missing any details? Again, it's just those couple of things that they've started with. The fact that they're getting all the cloud service and all that stuff and the fact that they're becoming an all-access program provider. No, who who knows? I think we might see more tomorrow because they're actually saying um, there's like Xbox has put out things saying that there's going to be a trailer tomorrow for like Xbox and like the future of gaming and stuff like that. So whatever that means could be five minutes, could be two minutes, but who knows? Maybe you'll see some GameStop marketing or some sort of verbiage or something like that tomorrow morning. So one thing they did say um, was, okay, so quoting, uh, this is from GeekWire. For many years, GameStop has been a strong go-to market partner for our gaming products and we are excited about continuing evolving the relationship for the launch of the Xbox Series X and S, Microsoft Xbox Chief Phil Spencer said in a statement, GameStop's extensive store base focus on digital transformation in an omni-channel environment and expert gamer associates remain an important part of our gaming ecosystem and we're pleased to elevate our partnership. So if Phil Spencer's on it, then you got to assume they've got they've got some sort of Hope for this thing, and uh, I'm hoping the best too. Well, that and you got Reggie leading up GameStop too. So. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Big Reg Dogs back. So, guys, uh, you hit the news, and I'm sure that we're going to be talking more about this over the next week or two. Uh, let us know your thoughts because GameStop's going to be alive now, and now Microsoft is a, is going to be a big part of that uh, customer service. At least it's here long enough for me to get my console, and that's all that matters. Yeah. To let, me. Hey, let me get mine, and then uh, you can get yours. So. Let's see. Moving on to the next topic. Recently, there was the PS5 teardown. This was an in-depth look kind of under the hood of what the PS5 had. There's a video that I believe was on IGN. It's about seven to eight minutes. It's um, it's just completely disassembling it. Now, it starts with the stand. 
because the, the the normal PS5 sits um, vertically and it kind of switches it to horizontally. But when you're just looking at it compared to that guy, Dude, it's the huge. PS5 is gargantuous. It's literally the size of like a child's torso. This guy's sitting here and it's like from here to like here on him. So before we even get into like the disassembly of it, I mean, where do you get to put this thing in your in your uh, in your entertainment stand, your system, your uh, everyone's gonna make room for it, and I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be cool, but like, damn, because that's like, what that I'm... was my. I've been saying that for like a while now, and I think this is really like the first. I, I think it's important to note too. This is like the first one out in the wild that's really like been been seen because he completely takes it apart. Because right now there's tons of like streamers and other people, media and stuff that have Xboxes. Nobody has a PlayStation Five right now that I've seen, unless they're just really under like a heavy NDA. But there's tons of people talking about Xbox, so, I mean, just to see something like this, but, uh, yeah, that was the first thing I was like, damn, this thing is huge. Yeah, because a lot of people were saying, you know, where do I fit this thing? Because, I mean, and the Xbox Series X has the same issue, is a lot of people's furniture and, you know, entertainment systems are are designed to fit modern-day, you know, systems, and these things is like, where do you put them? I'm glad I have space on top of mine to where I can just lay it down or stand it up, but I am curious where... A lot of people that just, you know, maybe in like an apartment, I have a little table. Like this thing is, it looks big by comparison to an Asian man disassembling it. I think the first thing that kind of came to my mind too with how big it was is like, they better make a slim box that this thing comes in. Otherwise you're going to be walking out with like a box like this. Like you're, trying to carry to your car. an easy target. Yeah. It's going to be like a boom box. Uh, but yeah, so like I was saying, the stand removes and it was showing this, I believe it's just like a flathead that takes off the bottom of it. You pop the thing out. It, it was kind of cool looking because the screw, there's a, like a spot in the stand that you could put it in. I like lock that. Lock it up. Yeah. And then you can attach it to the side, you know, the, the side console of it. And then you can flip it down horizontally and that's what it's going to sit on. So easy enough to just kind of flip back and forth outside of, you know, a twist and a turn. Not as easy as it should be, but. Not as easy as it should be, but, but easy enough. Um. Outside of that, he starts taking it apart, and I got to say, everything from here on out, just, I mean, he made it look extremely easy, so, I mean, who's... I could do it. I could probably do it, too, but I like the fact that those panels pop off quick, and though I, I think we're going to see a lot of custom panels coming soon. That reminded me of, like, the 360 face faceplates and stuff like that, that you just, like, yeah, pop just off or, the like, slide I mean, off is, the this top. This is the whole body. This is the whole... Well, like the sides too, because you used to be able to like take out the sides and people would customize them. I didn't mean to spit on you. Yeah, okay, I soak it up. But um, so yeah, it. I mean, what would you want to have? Would you get something custom? I mean, I feel like you could you could start ordering these parts, and people are just going to ship you panels, and then you just pop them on. I just get There's gonna be a lot of like Etsy stuff and Amazon stuff coming up quick. I'd get some big like Juggalo ICP ugly looking fucking like thing you. and just like slide that on. So I thought it looked really cool and, and at least easy enough for the average Joe to do it. The next thing they kind of showed off was that, because we're only going to hit some of the highlights. If you guys want to watch the whole video and most and see everything that it did, uh, the link will, will be in the description. But the next big thing they did was the double-sided air intake fan, which I think was the biggest component that in the PS5. That thing was pretty big, yeah. It's Huge. actually really wide, too, surprisingly. Yeah, they were saying that this is something that they've been like... Working on, it's a double air intake, so it's not just coming in one way or out the other way to build up dust, because a lot of people had issues about that. But even after that, they were showing that there's two dust collectors on the machine that you can actually, when you take it apart, you can vacuum out. So it's supposed to look easily and very doable maintenance in terms of just keeping your console uh, clean and flowing. Right, because those vents actually look pretty big when I was you actually looking that, yeah, at it. So I was like, yeah. damn, how's that? Like, that, that thing's going to get a shit ton of dust, especially us living out here in a desert. Mm. So I... Yeah, so uh, I they, they were really um, interested in that because one of the main things they were kind of showing off with the whole PS5 is they want cooling. They want cooling to be a big thing. They want this thing... And again, like Andrew said, there are Series Xs in the wild and people have reviews on them. We saw one in the wild, but it's still kind of locked behind closed doors. No one, there's no reviewer that's had one to say yes, it does run very smooth and it's not loud at all. Because one of the next things they were saying is that the, um, the Ultra HD Blu-ray drive unit is now in a case uh, sh in sheet metal case, which is supposed to, uh, I believe, just keep the volume down because it also has two layers of insulation. So right. Two things they wanted, uh, they kind of listened from what, like gripes about the PS4. It's loud and it doesn't cool down as, and it's hot. And they're going, okay, well, let's put the, the newest fan in production in this thing, one of the biggest components, and let's make this thing as quiet as a mouse. And I, I mean, we haven't heard or seen it yet, 
but it looks like they're moving in the right direction. As long as it's like my X's, then I'm kind of fine, because like the Xbox One X that I have now, it's quiet for the most part. Every now and then it does get warm, but it's never gotten hot to where I can't put my hand on it, or if I put like cheese on it, it'd melt or fucking something <laughs> like that. I couldn't <laughs> bake an egg. But every now and then it does, it doesn't get obnoxiously loud. But it will get loud. Does yours do that too? It'll sound like it's taken off. And it'll be going for a bit, and then it'll just like calm down. Yeah, mine. Well, it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes I'll be playing. Like you talking about the X. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my X will be playing, and I can hear the hum, and I can hear the fan if I'm playing. Like if I'm putting in a session, but it's never been hot. And my my, my X sits next to my window, and you know we live in Bullhead where it gets hot as shit. So it it's never been one hundred three burning. Yeah, was it? Oh, I looked at the weather. I thought it was one hundred one. <laughs> um, the last thing they were kind of showing off was, and I thought this was one of the cooler things, is that thermal conductor that they had. That was actually being coated in like, or it part was like, of like liquid, liquid metal. metals. It's something it is. they've been developing over the last like two years or something like that, he, he was saying. Yeah, and he you was showing it. You can actually see it. It yeah. looked cool. What do you think about it? I thought it was pretty cool, but I think it was just more funny because there's all kinds of people posting like Metal Gear memes. They put the bandana on it and stuff. And it was like liquid metal snake. And Dude, like, I, I was thinking like T2 the whole time. Yeah. I was waiting for his face to just kind of re-pop up. There. That, that'd be pretty funny. That, if we could make memes, that'd be cool. Well, I can make a meme, but you know, it's, uh, can, can I make it? Make like, a good a GIF. one? A GIF would be. Oh, that that would be pretty good. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Overall, you looked at it. There was a lot of other different specs that we're kind of looking at, like what the GPU and, and CPU and stuff like that are clocking in at, what all that stuff goes, where like the Wi-Fi and the and the uh, the Bluetooth and all that stuff goes in, all the external storage. There's a lot to take in when you're looking at it, and we don't want to get into every spec. I thought those were some highlights, and and I like the fact that they actually showed the audiences, hey, this is it. Yeah, this is really more for people. Like, I like that's what I do, like, for a living. I do, like, actual IT for a company. So I'm taking apart shit all the time. So for me, this is actually something I enjoy seeing. I think it's interesting. That's why... I, I, Craig, Craig, too. Um, that's I take apart phones. I take apart yeah. phones all day. And so, I, I mean, there's a lot of components in there. Like, even, like, the Wi-Fi wires and all that stuff. It's the same thing I would take I mean, they were both looking at, like, Wi-Fi. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, whatever. Okay, there's a CPU, yeah. there's a whatever. So to me, I find it interesting. I mean, it's not like you're going to get anything new sort of information or anything like that out of this video. But if you're interested in watching people take stuff apart or something like that, who knows? And then maybe we'll buy one and we'll do one of those videos where you put it in a fucking microwave and turn it on for 40 minutes. And <laughs> what happens to a PS5 in a microwave? Yeah, because we should mention that there are cases that people that have received the Xbox Series X, there's been reports that it is running hot, that it is running really like fire but when you listen to other uh pundits like like greg miller and stuff like that you know who have had it in their house for a couple of weeks they're saying it's not that bad so i want to touch on that for a quick minute because no one can really officially review the ps5 there are people out there reviewing the xbox series x and it's kind of seems like it's hit or miss i just want to say that as you know as a cautionary warning because if you are worried i know kyler is one of them worried about like a day one purchase this might be the red ring that day one purchase Series X has is that it overheats, but most of the people that we listen to and, and trust their word of are saying they have not had that issue. Yeah. But I, you can't speak for the whole batch. Uh, yeah, I, I've seen maybe like two people say that it gets hot, but it almost seems like it's an exaggerated pot. Like they're like, oh, like it'll burn your hand. Whereas everyone else is like, no, it gets warm. The Xbox One gets warm. The PS4 Pro, the PS4 gets warm. And it's it, I couldn't turn off like my air and it'll like heat my whole house or anything like that. But it is like kind of slightly warmer. And I think even more just to kind of take a note and to take that with a grain of salt because everyone's experience is different is again there are no ps5s out in the wild. There's a lot of Xbox One X's out there. Every time I go on Instagram, there's a new a YouTuber, streamer, somebody who's already got an Xbox One X. So if there really was some big sort of heating issue, we would see it across the board. Whereas two people, I'll take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, I would say we would see it more on video than a report. It wouldn't be someone, and unless there is a video and we missed it, I would, you'd be seeing these in YouTube videos, not not written in a report saying, oh, reportedly it was hot. Some guy from some place. Yeah, so um, so that was pretty much the teardown. Who probably guys. had it in like, a, like, this is the top of the shelf, and that's like the top of the Xbox. Oh, it's getting hot. Uh, I, don't, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, six with a stove. <laughs> yeah, guys, it's getting hot. <laughs> hey, you want to send us a PS5? We'll review it. We'll check it out. Send us an Xbox, Phil. Yeah, Phil, Phil. Phil, Phil. Uh, so anything else you want to add on the teardown or um, Xbox taking over GameStop at all? Before there move is on? a version with English subtitles, so make sure you watch that, because otherwise you're just going to think you're sitting there watching some guy, Japanese guy take shit apart. 
we don't understand Japanese, so don't think we're fluent. Yeah. <laughs> it is in another language. But but you can also watch plenty of, of people reinterpreting the video that they saw much smarter than we're going to be able to yeah, do. Yeah, it turns so, seven minutes into a 45-minute video. I, that's, that's what I was doing. So um, let's move on to... Rip it up! Bop, 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 bop. Um, so I want to keep on with this because this kind of stays in theme with what we were just talking about with the PS5. So uh, Jim Ryan, who's the president and CEO of the PS4, has recently stated that the P they plan on this, uh, stating the PS5 will outsell the PS4 launch with over 7 million sales by April. So if you guys aren't familiar, uh, they're within their fiscal year, which their fiscal year ends on March 34, uh, 31st. So the PS4 came out November 15th. 2013 and it launched at you know within that time frame 7 million units which is very impressive ps4 has one of the best uh launches in the history of games and the fact that they're stating the ps5 is going to beat it like they're not blinking an eye at it sony's backing it up is kind of questionable but not unobtainable um there's two kind of highs and lows that go with it the when the ps4 came out it had a slow rollout it was launched in only a certain amount of territories and then it got bigger and then it got bigger and it finally hit that 7 million cap when, when you're looking at the ps5 the ps5 is going to be a globally launched system within two weeks of the date so it will be in more territories faster the only thing that this one has on its uh, negative side is that we're living in the covid pandemic to where are people going to have money to buy it and there was rumor that when all the parts and everything was coming together, there was a there was a rumor that they're only going to be able to hit four million units. I think by the early uh, 2021. So if that rumor was any you know you know uh, leaning towards any fact, then four million is not going to touch seven million. But if 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 Jim Ryan is stating that it is going to hit it, and that leads me to believe that those were all kind of push away rumors, and there are going to be a lot in the wild. So that that kind of re. Um, solidifies that if you're worried that you didn't get a pre-order on a ps5 if they're talking 7 million by you know march then you're gonna find one by christmas if not by january february if what we're hearing is led to be true because that is still a big big number to hit because if you hit that number on stride to 7 million then you're on par to move with um ps4's you know overall lifespan which is what the second second best third best selling system of all time again i think even more important to note too is it's not like we've besides like demon souls with all these next gen games and stuff like that this there's not really any sort of crazy launch lineup so this isn't really a big jump from ps4 to ps5 same thing with the xbox to the series x so there probably might not be as many people too that are, I, it's not that day one console but i have to have it whereas the xbox 360 to the xbox one the ps3 to the ps4 there was a huge difference so that was i had to have that day one well another thing is is there's you know xbox one x and the series s are two different SKUs based on specs the digital and the and the and the disc are both going to count as that cell. So whether or not they, they run out of digitals first or they go to the disc, that's still going to count to that overall right. PS5 7 million. So is it doable? I think so. For sure. I am nervous, though, about the rumors of parts being short and, and, and launch uh, units. And then I'm also worried about pandemic if people are sitting on a cash flow problem. Is it going to outsell? You know, because we, you know, we're buying two or three Xboxes, you know, at a time. Most people are only going to be buying one. I'm curious if they're saying that $7 million is based on one house having two. So, interesting stuff. So, let me know what you think. What is your riff, sir? Uh, my first riff is just a simple, quick. Cyberpunk has officially gone gold. So, it's, in, it's past certification. It is ready to go. So, it is actually going to make this deadline unless something else happens come hell or high water. So, it looks like the crunch paid off so. yeah it's, yeah because once something goes gold it because i think some people were kind of misconfusing what the, what it actually meant it means that there's actually like a, a, a solid playable version of it that's ready to go onto a disc because what gold doesn't mean is that it's not ready for day one patches it's not ready for anything like that but there's a playable version of it that's ready to get manufactured put on disc sent out to stores at least in some part and kudos for them man because you get pushed back enough times you know, I'm glad they made the window because that was it November 16th, I believe, is their launch date. So I don't. Yeah, as of right now, that's it's 
it stands. They couldn't do it any. It, they can't push back to Christmas because nobody goes into Christmas. Nope. January is a bad month, and who knows what else is coming around then too. So like, who knows how far that would have had to go back. That and I mean the fact that I believe they're actually publishing this game themselves. So each day, every time that this game is sitting there on their storage mm-hmm. unit, that's costing them money now because it's not someone else's problem. So <laughs> I am glad that they made it, and uh, it's actually something I'm not like overly hyped for, but I am excited to play. Right, we're playing it. We're playing it. Are we? We're going to have to. I mean, it's, it's going to be out by the time next year's out. What else, what else are we going to play? No, um, you're out. I'm in. Hey, he's always in. So my last fifth, guys, comes from uh, Aaron Greenberg, who is the Expo- Xbox marketing boss. He was recently on a podcast, and they were kind of were hitting him with the question of the $70 game moving forward in the next gen, and they was slightly touching on uh, that... Obviously, um, third parties and stuff like that, like NBA 2K and all that stuff, they're leaning Call of Duty. They're leaning forward to being their uh, $70 games. They're saying that first-party Xbox games are going to be a case-by-case basis. They're looking at the fact that they're probably going to stay most of their games at 60 because they assume most people are going to have the Game Pass and most of their first-party games will be day one free on the Game Pass. So they don't want to really charge anyone more than they should they don't want to turn you away by buying a seven dollar game then they could just by enticing you with getting it day one on the game pass so i like that because i mean they're careful with their wording saying it's a case by case there probably are going to be certain games that hit 70 maybe if they include past versions of something like a gears of next gears of war with you know the anniversary collection is 70 dollars. so i'm sure they're going to look at you know what's worth its weight and 70 dollars might add a little um bonus to that but for the most part, I'm happy that they're saying, hey, we're going to keep most of our games 60 so that people can afford it because we're assuming most of you will be moving to the past, which is their overall goal to begin with. So I didn't really care for the statement just because the fact of the matter that what did the, like what exclusives they really put out this year versus like Sony. So Sony has already said that theirs is going to be 70 and people buy that console for exclusives. No one has really bought Microsoft lately for exclusives. So what do I care that the three to four games you're going to put out over a lifetime of a console that I actually want to play are $70 when they're already going to be on the Game Pass. So I could already play it on the Game Pass or get it 70 later. Nobody's going to go out and, oh man, I'm going to buy the Xbox because even if I don't get it on the Game Pass, I'm only spending 10 less dollars to play the full game and have it forever in my collection. So Yeah, but if you're moving forward to the life, if, if, I mean, if the statement blankets the lifetime of the system and we're talking five years from now, Every game, every first party game, which you know, now that Bethesda's under there and everything else moving forward, is just gonna stay at, at base value. I mean I mean look I mean look what money they'd be losing on not putting up ten bucks just to keep it at sixty for the consumer. I mean I mean the bait is to just hey, just come to Game Pass. It's not about what so, you want, it's about the consumer. It's okay. about what I need. So I, I interesting thing, and again, just more things that Xbox is just saying, Hey, take it at sixty or join the Game Pass. <laughs> My last rip is that they just put out a trailer today for the Combat Pack 2, which is also, you can buy it separately, from Mortal Kombat 11 cool trailer. Ultimate. And the trailer was actually really good. I really liked it. And to show you what like what a nerd I am, as soon as that Tarkatan was running, I was like, okay, well, that's obviously not Baraka. The facial structure is not the same. But Baraka wouldn't run from anybody in a fight like that because he's the leader of the Tarkatan. So there's no way he'd run from a fight. So... Either way, the fuck up. it comes with uh, the combat pack comes with three new characters. That's Melina, Rain, and surprisingly, Rambo. And this was actually leaked a little while ago, but people didn't believe it because Rambo was the DLC character. What's even cooler is they actually got Sylvester Stallone Good. I was gonna to ask do you that. the Rambo. Yeah, I was like, it sounded just like him. Just like previously before, I don't actually know the guy's name, but the person who plays Robocop, Alex, Mur- uh, Alex Murphy, I believe this mm-hmm. is uh robocop's actual real name they actually got that same voice actor to do him nice. too so the only person they had, didn't get was terminator but i guess they said that and i guess this kind of points to that they probably did reach out to him and maybe arnold was just too busy yeah so no, actually, enough people can it, imitate that accent <laughs> yeah so i thought that was actually really cool this is uh, going up for pre-order october 15th if you want the ultimate edition at 59.99 that comes with the full game all the DLC, all the extra characters, all the extra everything, and uh, it co- obviously comes with free. And obviously, it comes with free upgrades for the PS5 and the Xbox One to be, or the Xbox Series X, excuse me, to 4K, all that good stuff. 
Um, I actually really love this trailer. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really cool. And I kind of really hope that based off of the last one, even though I, I didn't play it, I actually went through and watched it on YouTube because I had so many other things to play that I didn't want to buy something I didn't think I was going to play right away. Loved the first DLC story. I hope they do another one, especially because people have been clamoring for Melina. Now, I'm not crazy about her design, only because of her mouth. If you played M <laughs> if you played MKX, they actually redesigned her mouth to where she has lips and, and the rest of her it, jaw yeah. kind of spreads apart. It's almost like a Blade 2 kind of situation. That I actually thought that was one of my all time favorite character, like retcons, designs, whatever you want to call it, redesigns. Yeah. Fucked it up. Whatever. So again, but this is a different timeline, so it could be some sort of evolution thing. Rain looks great, and I actually thought Rambo looked really cool, and I'm kind of interested in how he's gonna play. I love it. I'm your worst nightmare. Da, 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 oh, yeah, with that da, 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 LMG or whatever. So either way, it just shows that like they're not afraid to experiment. They're not afraid to go and do whatever. They already have all kinds of crazy skins. They have like the Carl Weathers skin for Jack, and I don't know if you actually know this, and I meant to say it before, but they had actually done something with DLC, and of course everyone knows who Noob Cybot is, the uh -huh. shadow. They gave him a Batman Who Laughs skin. Ooh. So he's got like the metal eyes and everything with the Dark Knight's metal and oh, stuff like that. like that. And so that was really cool. So they're just kind of all over the place with all these different properties they're kind of working with that I'm actually really enjoying it. Again, I don't take that part of it for the... Uh, the serious story which is absolutely what i love i think mortal kombat's a phenomenal story but i do love seeing stuff like that that they're just not afraid to get out there and like let's try this let's try leatherface freddy krueger you know the predator alien we, we just got all these different things let's just throw it in there and it, it'll make sense and it does yeah hey, i love, really like the fact that mortal kombat is i don't want to say the dumping ground but it's kind of the experimental of like let's add because it used to be soul calibur Back in the day, Soul Calibur used to get all these characters from different genres and different games and all these things. And it kind of seems like Mortal Kombat is now the place to get your Predators, your, your Friday the 13th, your, you know, your Jasons, now your John Rambos and stuff like that. So Mortal Kombat has never been shy away. And I like that this is another feather in the cap for WB. I'm glad they're not selling as of yet. You know, this is still a good pack. Because, yeah, I, I was saying that the pre-order gets you the Time Warrior skin pack. Which was a couple oh, yeah, more, which was a yeah, couple more yeah. for people like that. And did you? I, I don't know if I heard you say it or not, but the pre-order is on October. But doesn't it launch on November seventeenth? Isn't that the actual day you're able to execute it? I I didn't see. I thought it said it was November seventeenth for PS4 and everything else. But because Xbox launches on the tenth, that it would be cross whatever. And, and this is a game that is cross gen, yeah, like cross play, too. cross platform, all that cross whatever for fighting. Except for, I think they were a little cloudy on whether or not that transferred to PC, but uh, I'm not a big, like, fighting person, so I don't know, like, what the advantage of, like, keyboard and mouse would be to, like, a fighting game. I'll do more of those joysticks and the six-button oh, combos. Oh, the, the, yeah. fu the fight six? That's where it's at. So, uh, kudos for Mortal Kombat, man, because I like that they keep moving forward, and it's, it's a game that if you bought it, it's not just a one and done. You get to keep moving forward with new combo packs, new players, and I'm sure their online is just fantastical. Uh, so before we move on, anything else you want to add on your river? Nah. So before we move on, real quick, Andrew, what are you, what are you still playing? Uh, what's going on? Uh, I'm just actually a bit further in Yakuza 2. I don't know if the last time we talked about it, I had said that I kind of wasn't crazy about it, and then it was kind of making sense because I started off like kind of not liking it, and I was like, the other one was better, and now that I'm kind of getting the fight system down and figuring out what's what, I'm actually really like enjoying it. I'm. I'm loving this fucking game, and I'm actually finding myself, and I don't know if it's maybe because some of them are not easier, but I, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm actually doing more side missions than I did in any of the other ones, Ooh. and I don't know how many there fun. are, but I'm, like, the other one, once I got to a certain point with the story, I was like, dude, okay, I just want to beat the game, I want to beat the story, like, as much fun as I'm having this game, but I don't want to do every side mission, this one, I'm actually clear, and maybe it's just because that Yakuza's finally taken a hold of me, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know it's if anyone sucks. really, like, caught every single Pokemon until, like, maybe their third <laughs> game around, you know what I mean, once you're finally like, alright, I love Pokemon, this is the game I'm gonna do it true to, so maybe this is the game I'm gonna do it true to, that I'm doing, like, every side mission before I can like go, go on with the story, yeah, so. you know for doing 100%, can you give me one more of these golden rotors I um i've just uh, like last episode i started i started playing doom eternal i did what are you playing <laughs> doom eternal and uh when i talked about it last week i i played one mission of it and i gotta say i like that the hyper action just all you do is just kill demons and it was awesome and now i'm on a, a, a How's mission, the music five dude fire and there's a place where you can go to they have like a hud where you can go to um which is the I th what do they call it? The, the Doomslayer ship? Or no. Uh, 
Tower of Doom, whatever this ship is called. There's a place you can go to where you can unlock albums because there's a tons of uh, collectibles and you can start playing music. Oh, that's when you do cool. it, it'll start banging them out. So I was, I was just, I was just on there because sometimes I'll leave my Xbox on and I'll be doing something else and I just started playing like all the different music. So it's really good. Um, a lot of people I know hated the fact that it's kind of more platformy. I'm actually liking it. it. I mean, it's not the best mechanics in a platforming game, you know, as well it shouldn't. It's an FPS, but I thought they did a really good job at doing it and it just puts a whole new challenge on it. So I'm actually, like I was telling you before, I'm playing it with the Maka's guys. So if you guys are into good walkthroughs, Maka91, uh, that's how I'm doing it. I'm, I'm getting all of my collectibles because it's letting me really explore the world instead of just kind of running through it. I got to say, Compared to 2016, it's more aggressive, it's faster, it's harder. I'm playing it on one of the lower difficulties, and I still feel like some of these battles are just overwhelming. So I can, It's like Devil May Cry for me. I like playing games on hard, but I'm not playing it on it when there's like six different difficulties and a, and, a re, and a replay through. So I'm just playing this casually and having a lot of fun, So and I'm so glad it's on the pass because I'm really, really liking this game. A lot of different guns, a lot of different exploration, a lot of different secrets, and... I can't wait for you to play because I can't wait to talk to you about it. Yeah, I, uh, that might be my next game. I try to beat before the Series X comes out. Um, yeah, maybe even when the, when the next one comes out, beat it on on the upscale because it's going to be there. This game, I guarantee, is going to be sit there for, well, probably forever now. Now that it's a first. Party, yeah, who, so. who knows? It might be. Uh, so let's move into uh, video game questions of the week, 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 and the first one comes from. Jab stab. Now jab stab. I know you had a beer selection, and uh, we had a couple. I people, tried looking. Yeah, we had a couple people select it, so I'll see if I can go find it. His beer selection was Firestone Walker. Try the Speedway. Fly Jack. Yeah, I'm not a big light beer fan outside of Guinness, but this is my new go-to video game question of the week. Best new system for family party games. I don't personally get to game as much as I'd like, but if I, but if I had to get a system for my ten and seven year old, uh, and the rest of us occasionally. Would the Switch be a better option than the Xbox or PlayStation? I think, hands down, it's known as the family game system. Right. Now, that's not to say there's not great family games on the Xbox and PlayStation, but you can't. Nintendo is and has always been known as the family-friendly, game-oriented system. So if that's your question is, out of the three, what should I buy for my, my 10- and 7-year-old to play, then I would say that. My spin would be... And I was talking about with Andrew, uh, or at least on the post on Instagram, is maybe look into some of the plug and plays. Look into like the SNES Mini or something like that, or the new Sega Genesis Mini. Those are, I think, perfect for younger children because not only are you not forking out two to three hundred dollars, you know, they're they're usually around fifty to a hundred. You're not you're not looking at adding software to it. You're not looking at adding an online capability. So if you're looking for a game that just you know one to two player can play and it's family oriented and they're younger children, I would say check out the SNES Mini, check out the Sega Genesis Mini because they come stock with anywhere from 25 to 50 games. I mean it's a simple purchase, plug, play. No, I mean really no upgrades or or. or or fixing it or adding anything to it. I think that might be your best bet. That'd be my opinion. But the Switch is still, I would say, the family-friendly system out of the three. Um, I think it would kind of depend, too. Like, is this going to be a second system or is this your primary system? If it's your primary system, you can get an Xbox Series X. There's all kinds of kid games on there, friendly games. I play, like, golf with friends with, like, my oh, cousins and stuff it. like that all the time. I love that game. They have, like, the Jack Party Pack. There's all kinds of different things. It's a little more adult. So if it's, <laughs> it's going to be something that is you're going to be playing it too like you're that's going to be your primary system then i would probably recommend either the x or the ps5 but the i've always looked at the switch as a secondary so i play it with um with christina my love like i i play mario we've got mario kart we had um i was just trying to think of what else we really had for it uh, we wanted i i yeah i haven't gotten smash, smash Brothers, yet, party but, car I, I mean, the anything Pikmin games, the Yoshi games, the Kirby games. Yeah, anything you play Mario related is just a shit ton of fun. Even when it comes to, uh, they have that like Mario the 3D World ones with the cats and yep. stuff like that. That's gonna be coming. Even the classic like left to right, like I bought that Mario and like uh, I think I forget what it was. It was Mario and Luigi like 3D whatever. And that's just like your classic Mario, two people going left to right, beating each level and whatever. And we we're having a bla absolute blast playing that. Like I have so much fun playing those. I have way more fun playing those than I do with some of the other things, but 
the other things give me the chance to, okay, when I'm not playing golf, I'm playing Yakuza. <laughs> but the other thing is if you do get a Switch and, you, and you're not intimidated by the online, like when you're playing or when you're paying for Xbox or, no, or PlayStation and it's, and it's month to month or it's um, or it's annual, it's only 20 bucks annually for the Nintendo Switch. So and when you get that, you get the NES online games and you get the SNES online games. So even if you are just buying it for a Mario Kart, a Mario Party, whatever, you can just buying the twenty bucks for the year nets you about fifty games that are between the two, the eight bit and the sixteen bit games. So more games that are guaranteed to be more family safe if that's what you're looking for. So yeah, it, short answer: if you're looking for the most family safe, I would say Switch because you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Next question comes from Sheila T. And she writes, Hey there, with so many big holidays right around the corner, uh, like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, what would you say your favorite holiday is? Hashtag next gen. Um, I, oh, I'll go first. Go for it, because uh, they're, all, they're all great up here. Short answer for food would be Thanksgiving. Overall, no matter what. But overall, the <laughs> holiday that I love the most month to month is Halloween. Hands down. Hands down, I love October. It's when the, uh, I'm a huge horror fan, so that's when the best TV shows are on. All the best movies get added to Netflix. You can play that spoopy game if you want to. Not to mention, everywhere you go, candy is discounted. It's cheaper. I'm huge into sweets. Where I work right now, there's always bowls of candy out there, and I'm just constantly like picking at it, too. Just the costumes being creative. I personally prefer, and I don't live in a place where it's like as easy to do it, but I personally prefer going and seeing people's like crazy spooky houses and stuff like that that they have <laughs> decorated versus like some guy's got his fucking lights synced up to KR K Rock 102 Guns N' Roses or Love something. Um, I would say um, as a kid, it was Christmas. As, as a little kid, there's nothing better than Christmas. Yeah, hands down. It's, it's the lights. It's, you know, the smells of cooking with gingerbread man and stuff like that. The tree it's house. The, it's the, the tree. It's the best memory I have as a kid opening up a present with my brother. And I, I never mean to big time on anybody. I don't mean if, like, maybe your childhood wasn't as good. You had, you had bad times or something like that. I'm only reflecting on what I had as a kid. I, I love Christmas. It was the best. I'd have to say moving in as a teenager, though, Halloween was the shit because that... Because Christmas and Thanksgiving are family time. That's when you hang out with, you know relatives you haven't seen in a while or family friends that come over halloween's kind of when you meet up with your best friends you plan your thanksgiving outfit you get a you get a you know maybe as a kid your mom had to walk you but as you know you get older you get to start roaming the streets you know halloween was fun but i would say as an adult so if your question is what's my favorite one now it's thanksgiving thanksgiving i like because we usually do about three in a day so i like doing one morning one one lunch, and then a dinner one. But I would arguably say the better day is the day after Thanksgiving. The leftovers? You don't have to deal with anybody's bullshit, and you got plates for days. So um, outside of those, the big one, and I love New Year's, but these days, you know, we've been around our neck of the woods shootings and stuff like that. So it's like I don't really give a shit about New Year's anymore. Uh, what's it like maybe a pocket holiday? You a memorial man? You a Labor Day guy? Uh, you like Lincoln's birthday? Uh, March 16th is the next best holiday. 316 is our made holiday. So the best holiday in the book is Austin 316. It's a nice plug, bro. Hey, scary as hell, man. Scary as hell. So um, I've got a star next to questions, Andrew. So uh, I believe I'm supposed to ask you something or you ask me something. Right. This is actually something I was thinking about, and I posed the question to you guys, too. So kind of thinking about it with... Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming out and Cyberpunk 2077 coming out. Um, and I'm unaware play, of what he's asking. Um, PlayStation so. really only has, as far as like launch exclusives so far that I know, would be like Demon Souls. And I think, I, I don't know if Sackboy was one or not, but do you think that Halo being pushed back now? Because at the time, I know it was kind of devastating and it would be exciting. But it seems like all the sentiment, all the negativity is kind of on Sony right now versus Xbox. Do you think it's really like that devastating now listening to it on the back burner? I'm actually a little bit more grateful, even though I would have another shooter to play and it would be nice to play Halo. I've got so many other things to play. I hope this comes out at another time where like I'm more available. So at the time, yeah, that news was pretty devastating. But now that I've really had time to kind of like marinate and think about it and with everything else and with all the positive vibes Microsoft's been getting lately, I don't really think that 
that that news has really been as devastating as people thought it was a few weeks ago when we got it. And I just kind of want to know your take. My okay, excellent question. I, the moment you started saying, it, I was like, all right, formulate an idea. Um, I th- I'm exactly with you. I think it was a big fuck, a big fucking problem when it first happened. But now that the weeks have gone by, I think. There's one thing to do damage control, and there's another thing to do PR control, and and Microsoft just did both. They fucking they're buying they're taking the news off of Halo. They're going, oh, let's talk about us buying Bethesda and Zenimax. Let's talk about us buying GameStop. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about what we're moving forward to. Let's take eyes off of the big game that we know everybody waited for to buy the system. I was preaching it. That was you're losing day oneers. But the more they stack the pass, the more eyes they take off of it, it becomes a thing in the rear room year. Because I'm almost at this point going, okay, then now I know what I'm looking forward to next holiday. I know that I have this big game that's going to look and, and play as we wanted it to. Because if they would have hit, if they would have swing and a miss and that game came out and, and didn't deliver, they would have soured Microsoft with the launch the fact that they're like nope let's pull it out and let's talk about this let's talk about this they're doing everything right to move to move eyes and i think i'm with you i I almost forget about it i'm almost like you know what i'm not i do got big games we've got three big big 70 hour games coming up to where it's like i didn't need halo jumping on especially now the fact we're still gonna have the master chief collection and you're still gonna have you're still gonna have halo games to play i can wait because the rumor was it was gonna push back till next november but there's other people debating that it might come out like anywhere between, you know, uh, March and June or something or something like that. I'll take it when I get it at this point. I think too, it, it, and and that sentiment kind of didn't change. Like really think I, at the time it was, but now that even if that game were to have come out day one and it was a ten out of ten, as much as I would love it. I'm kind of more excited now that I have something in the pipeline because other than I uh, the stack November and Resident Evil like early next year, there's not too many other games that I'm like, oh man, I'm really looking forward to that. That's great. Again, we'll have to wait for E3 and other things like that. That now this is something. Okay, this is on the horizon. The same way God of War or Horizon Zero yeah. uh, Forbidden West is for PlayStation. So I'm kind of. Again, they made it something that was, okay, we're going to take this negative, but now you're excited for this game because it's in the pipeline. Yeah, it's a game going... If I would have got it right now, it's like Halloween. I'm eating my eye candy quick. What do I have to look forward to? Now we still have good games to play to tide us over, and I know a good first-party exclusive Xbox game hopefully. is coming, and it, hopefully it's good, but it, it is coming, and that's... It's, it's, it's coming. I mean, I don't know what else you can do besides going, yeah, Halo, and it's going to be right. It's going to be done... Right. It's not going to be half-assed. It's not going to be undercooked, hopefully. But, you know, so, yeah, I'm glad they made the move. And I am, because now it's going, okay, now I have my Series X. Now what's coming? Now what's next? Because I don't know if they had a lot of big 21, 2021 launch games coming, but now we know, assumably, that's one For of them. sure, at least one, yeah. So yeah. I, that was my, I was actually just thinking about it the other yeah, day. Yeah, nice. I just was, realized that. I was like, damn, you know, like, I'm not as mad, or not mad, but, like, upset or kind of down as I was on it at one time, so... Yeah. So, excellent, man. Anything else we got on questions or anything like that? Nah, uh, move on to the contest. So let's go quickly, guys, into what the contest is. So, guys, if you've been following us for the last couple of episodes, ever, you know that we like to give stuff away. We are currently giving away an Xbox Series X or a digital PS5. Now, how do you enter? Make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you leave a comment down below saying hashtag next gen. The recipients who can win are only going to be North Americans and most of Europe. Uh, We have a list. I'll pop it back up. If your country is on there, you're eligible. If you do not see it and you're a country that's in Europe and you're curious if you can get it, write us. We will let you know if it's doable because, again, this is our biggest uh, uh, giveaway ever. We're on a budget, guys. We can't just, you know, spend more than what it's worth doing. We're doing our best to get it to you guys. So make sure you tell your friends about it. Make sure you tell everybody you know about it because um, we want to give back to a community that's got us this far. Andrew and I started off at like 140 subscribers last, you know, early last year. We're almost to a thousand and that's our goal. That's what we want to get. Yeah, hopefully by the end of the year. So if you could help us out, eternally grateful. But again, like he said, make sure you are subscribed because we have do to look at that. If you are not, we won't even tell you. We won't even mention your name. We'll just trash your shit and pull somebody else out. Another thing to help you out too, 
turn on those notifications because I do actually have a lot of people that I watch. I am on YouTube all the time. I don't even see when our video pops up in my feed, <laughs> and I know when it's coming up. So I have to turn on my notifications so that way I can add it to my watch later, and I could write all you guys back and kind of do whatever. It makes it much easier for me. Should be even easier for you. So um, you guys can watch our last episode and comment in. You guys can watch this episode and comment in. I believe we go all the way to episode 69, and I believe that is November 5th. I, I believe we'd have to double check the date. It's it's the we it's, should make that thumbnail Takashi six. Yeah, it's the date right before next gen comes out. But keep in mind, guys, if you win it, remember we're we're not getting it to you day one. We're gonna have to go buy it. We're gonna have to talk to you, see what you want, and then we're gonna have to ship it. So it's gonna be something you'll be getting, and I'm hoping the God it's before Christmas so that you guys have it. So keep that in mind, and make sure you tell your friends, guys. Make sure that you follow us on all the social medias at Facebook. On Instagram at Last Call Productions, at Twitter at Last Call PuroDZ. Send us questions if you guys have any inquiries at Last Call Productions at gmail.com. And you guys can follow us if you don't watch the YouTube podcast on our Castbox, on our iTunes, on our Spotify at the show Last Call Gaming. And again, anyone listening audio, the contest you have to enter on YouTube. So yeah, you YouTube have to leave only, a physical guys. comment on YouTube. So, Andrew, anything else you want to add on this beefy, beefy episode? Nope. No, so guys, my name is Craig Perales, and that is Manju Montemayor. And until next time, cheers. The other night, we did do power hours at my house. Who's um, we? Uh, me, Caroline, Christina. This is what Skypes are for. We do plenty of Skypes. Uh, yeah, your internet sucks. I don't want My internet is fantastic. That. I just got my new uh, router modem. And I don't want to have to mute you every time I'm talking shit either. Like, oh, like I do you. <laughs> so you don't mute. You just like sending people texts. Oh, but I definitely uh, threw up in my grass. Threw up in your grass? What are you, a dog? Did you eat it afterwards? No, but it was fucking... So, I don't know what it is. Where's grass in your house? Your backyard? Yeah, grass okay. in the front and the back. I don't remember. Well, your front, I remember your patio and all... Or your, no, my friend here, when you walk out to my house, there's grass. You know, my giant fuck the thing my giant fucking tree's in the middle of? You have a tree? Yeah. I like, guess I haven't been there in a while. <laughs> Paul Bunyan would have to come cut it down. Oh, you got a prayer. But, uh, the fucking Panda Express over that way by Sam's Club, it's fucking garbage. And it's the one with the drive through This one over here, it's always fresh. I feel like the owner even fucking kisses the box when he puts it in the bag for me and everything. I think extra like, noodles. It's always so good. When I got that one, like Sheena brought it home, I just oh, as soon as I took the first bite, I was like, Dude, I'm gonna throw this up later. This shit sucks. Ugh. I'm gonna throw it up later and it's not me from the beer. But you finished that plate though. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you get your money's worth. Yeah, I don't spend good money and throw stuff and away. And we need nickels too. Yeah. Yeah. Well how long was this? Saturday. Oh, shit, recently? Yeah. No, I didn't see you all weekend. Come over Friday. Friday when I edit the show all the goddamn day? I am exhausted. You think I want to jump back into seeing you again? You'll be done by nighttime. Oh. Tyler's coming over and saying the night. Oh, you know what he called me the other day? Uh-huh. And I completely missed it. And I was like, oh, I'm we'll calling back. Totally forgot to say his name right now. That's probably why he was calling you was to tell you to come over. Oh. Oh, for this week. Yeah, for Friday because we were supposed to power Oh, I can't get fucked up. I got that wedding. Oh, that's tomorrow. You know what? Friday's tomorrow. Yeah, Friday's... The only good thing about Friday is the boys. Are you on the boys yet? Please tell me you started watching the boys. Yeah, every time I jump on Call of Duty, I watch the boys game. Oh, you're killing me, bro. What time's the wedding on Saturday? I don't know. Some time in the afternoon, I'm sure. <laughs> and you're telling me a couple power hours is going to make you not a show A couple up? power hours? No, Tyler's going to want to take shots and do drinks and... No, I got rid of the moonshine, actually, so I didn't make that mistake. Like, when Dante came over, I, I'm lying. I think it's still in the fridge. You just got to hide it. You has got to put it behind the vegetables. No. So I'll <laughs> no, no one's ever going to look. I'll no, no, it's not. Dante didn't pull it out. I did, because once I get drunk, I don't care. Oh, you're just like, yeah. stupid around. Then you got to hide it from yourself. We were playing, like, Captain Dickhead, and, like, I get being an aggressive dickhead or whatever, but he was like, Andrew, drink, uh, uh, 20 drinks. Wait, he was on Saturday? No, and this was, like, a few, like, oh, a month, like, two, like two months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did a power hour, and then we were drinking, like, my brother was there, I think. Caroline might have been there. I don't remember. But yeah, he's like, yeah, well, you got you got 40 drinks or like 70 drinks or something like that. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to sit here and just 
keep that s- sipping beers while we're playing the fucking game. That sounds like my Dante. So I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll sorry, that's why I bust out the moonshine. I was like, all right, I'll just start taking shots of the moonshine. And I started drinking out of the fucking jug thingy, and... You're a bold kid, Arnold. I definitely threw up that night, too. Nice. Nothing wrong with that. That's why I was cleaning the pipes. But I'm pretty sure I was fine the next day, if I remember. Nice. I don't know. I just... I do that weird thing, too. Like, I did that last time I was drinking. I was like, okay, like, I'm pretty kind of drunk right now. I need to switch it up. So I'm going to start drinking vodka Red Bulls because it gives you that feeling of being okay, but you don't hurt till the next day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a small problem. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm sitting there cruising for a while. You like you're alive. I'm like, dude, I'm not even drunk right now. Like, I feel fine. You know, I'm not even going to drink a water before I go to bed. See? That's the man in you talking. And then I died the next day. <laughs> and he's gone. 